Hello, welcome to our channel. My name is Ufonobong Dosset, your host. You know, it's always exciting to see you come around to study with us. Please, I always encourage us to like, share, and subscribe so that others may also hear this and learn or benefit from it. You know, last week we discussed uh, marital bliss and marital blues. Marital bliss and marital blues. We will just look at uh, a peek to that marital bliss. So what is marital bliss? Marital bliss simply means marital happiness. We both husband and wife live in peace and harmony, in full joy, full length of joy. You know, for, for you to have marital bliss, there are some lubricants. And the lubricant for a woman is submission, while the lubricant from the man's side is love, which we are encouraged to do. Now, in doing so, this lubricant produces um, benefits to the marriage, to the home. And, and you know, if everything is uh, based on God, of course, God will take over and make everything beautiful. So, these lubricants are produced by the following ingredients. Seeking God's wisdom daily. You need to seek God's wisdom for you to be able to be humble, to your husband and for you to love your wife you need to forgive you need to forgive resolution of disagreement of course you have to make sure everything of course whatever the way there is disagreement it is resolved relationship of third parties that they actually limit third parties to your home try and limit them friends and families you know you have to make sure you contain them trust and effective communication there must be trust and communication link between the husband and wife must be open and clear no ambiguity honoring marital vows whatever you say you will do protecting and keeping your home please you have to do that then prayer and fellowship you do that together know that the wife will pray separately the husband will pray separately no it has to be together you know the bible says we're two or three so when you talked about two now the family angle husband and wife fit into that too the way two or three gathers in my name so in that angle or mold you have to fit in a husband and wife then contentment that is one of the things that spoils um marriage that we actually change bliss to blows it changes bliss to blue. So when a wife sees other people and family start comparing, or the husband will see another woman, they start comparing. At the, at the tail end of it, it becomes a marital blues. Rather, the bliss that God has created for us to enjoy. So this week, we are to discuss the Lord that sustains. This is a very interesting topic. Is The topic is loaded. With times and season in life like this, we have to make sure we put our trust and faith in God because he's the one that sustains us. Hello. Welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, please, put a desire in my heart to trust in you put a desire in my heart to believe you put a desire in my heart to believe and count everything for you in the name of jesus thank you daddy because you know all is done for this i ask in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen you know and uh, our memory verse is taken from psalms 55 verse 22 psalms 55 verse 22 it says cast thy burden upon the lord and he shall sustain thee he shall never let righteous be moved. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never let the righteous be moved. So, you know that the Bible verse, if you put your trust in him, if you are in him, because number one thing is you must be in Christ. You must give your life to Christ and then allow him to take over from there. A man who put his faith on trust in God will believe God for everything to wait on him. 
You know, the Bible says, For they that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. So, in our Bible text, Genesis 21, let's read from 14 to 20. And he says, Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then set her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Bisheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow store away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. As she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy cry, and then the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up, take him by thy hand, for I will make him unto I will make him unto a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy to drink. Twenty. So when God was with the boy, so he grew up. He lived in the desert and became Asha. Now, if you even read down in that chapter, there was a place that her, even Hagar exclaimed. He said, Now I have seen the God that sees me. A Roy. A God that sees me. So now their topic, the God that sustains. So now you must, in a way, being in Christ, believe that God sees you at all times. Believe that God sees you at all times. So in our introduction, in according to John 16, verse 33, he forewarns us that we will face challenges in the world, but he assures us that victory is certain for us at the end of the day. You know, in Hebrews 13, verse 5, God gives us the strength to support physically and mentally during challenges. So we therefore need to cast our case upon the Lord because he cares for us. Now when we when we cast all our case upon the Lord, even in times of illness, financial challenges, uncertainty, he will see us through and he will, it will end in praise. And I pray that will happen to me and you in the name of Jesus. Now our first lesson outline says when all hope is lost when all hope is lost he sustains us even in that state of hopelessness he said there is a present help in times of trouble he is a present help in times of trouble look at that a bible a bible text Hagar thought everything has ended in that Bible text, Hagar went to put the boy under one of the bushes. That's what the Bible says. And she little far away from the moved a little far away from the baby because she did not want to watch her baby die. And then the angel spoke. Said, God has seen her, the baby's cry. And then, so I think it is good that we actually cast our case upon the Lord and stop complaining and murmuring. Let God do his work. If you look at um, Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever present in trouble. King James will say ever present in times of need. So he's ever present in times of trouble, even in your trouble. He knows everything. You know, Panam Persipal sang it so many years ago. He said, he sees what I see. He knows what I know. He feels what I feel. He is the one who cares for me. So believe me, he cares. He knows, so he sees, he feels what you feel. Hagar never knew that God was listening or God saw everything. She thought everything has come to an end, but the angel went to her. So I want to encourage us. There is no hopeless situation as far as you are in Christ Jesus. So never lay down your trust. Divine, just believe divine ability. Never lay down your trust in divine ability. Because God is always there to do it. If you look at 1 Kings 17, 19 to 15. And he says, Go at once to Seraphat in this, uh, the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he, he went to Seraphat. When he came to the town gate, a widow there was gathering stick. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called. And bring me please a piece of bread as surely as the lord your god lives she replied i don't have any bread only a handful flour in the jar and little oil in the jug 
I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. 13. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, a jar of flour will not be used up and a jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sent rain on the land. And you know, the woman believed the prophet and went ahead and do it. Of course, that is exactly how I want us to do. Believe God at all times. Another point says you supposed to, your supposed last meal can be your first meal to riches and success a meal you thought is going to be the one or that situation you thought that can become an end or that thing you said oh this is the final there's never a dead end for children of god your situation can be receive divine intervention of course it happens in Aga. even if you look at john 5 11 to 12 that boomer man at the pool of bethesda he was there for many years but what happened Jesus visited him. The hopeless situation, you know, he said he did not say when the angels come to uh, uh, steer the water, there was nobody to help him. But at the end, he did not need to enter the water. He was healed. He was a first person to be at that water side, but did not enter the water and was healed. So then he thought he was the least, but now he became the first in the ranking of the miracle by that pool. And he's much talked about up to today. So, in that hopeless situation, believe it. Always hope and believe that God will say, pick up your mouth and walk. God will pronounce. He said, I've heard you. Then the end surely will come. There's always a word from God, or from the throne of God, to even worse situations. You know, look at that, our, our widow, in the widow of Sarifat. The word of God changed the whole situation. Unto her was a dead end, unto Elijah was a dead end. She, he was looking for food, and the woman too has a food, but they wanted to eat and die. But now the word of God changed destinies, blended them. Destiny helpers are everywhere. God has provided them. He said he has made everything according to life, everything that pertains to life and worldliness. He has already made them available. So it is now key to assessing them, getting them, the knowledge you need. So there's always a word of God from the throne to the worst situation. So you believe, hold on to God that owns cattle on a thousand hill. That's according to uh, Psalm 50 verse 10. For every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hill. He owns silver and gold. So what then does he not have? Is it human or whatever? The truth is, you know, we, we just trying to, call, I'm kind of trying to save time in this our topic. I have thousand and one stories that I can tell you to actually make you to know that indeed we have a God that sustains us. This is a topic that I would have loved to discuss one on one with a group of people so that I can encourage them. So I don't know whatever you are going through. I don't know whatever that is challenging you. Believe me, God will fix it. Believe me, God will fix it. After this period, He will share your testimony. The God that sees us, he saw Hagar and visited Hagar. Even when Hagar did not, you know, you look at the story. Hagar did not ask God for anything. She was just sober. She was just worried. She didn't pray and ask God for anything. So if Hagar did not ask and visited Hagar, how about you that will ask? As even the Bible encourages us to ask. So how about you that ask? Will he not do it more than what he did to Hagar? So hold on to him. Trust him. He's there to do it. Wait for divine visitation. There's a time and season for everyone. Some people are harvesting in their season of harvest. Don't jealous anybody. Your own season of harvest is coming. Challenges of life, part of the challenge of Christian is they always need to see me, that person, you know, be Christian, and we started life together. No. You know, I told you there are so many thousand and one stories I would have told, but it's no time. Please stop comparing. This is time and season for everyone in life. It's not yet your time. Just continue to believe God. Trust God. Load your cloud. Even rain. You know, sometimes rain will fall at a particular location and will not fall at a particular location. But then those two locations, you see, all the two locations will be cloudy. What happened? 
the rain used to fall here and the other place is cloudy. And when it is cloudy here, it will be falling there. So why don't you learn from such and believe God? Trust in God Almighty for His present never cease. Trust on God Almighty. Of course, if you look at um, Hebrews 13 verse 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. If you don't believe his word, if you don't trust in what, don't you even know what you trust? Please, I will encourage you, put all your hope and trust on God. And you know, a quick one, let me quickly say this. You know why people will ask God for things and some of those things does not come to pass or God does not answer them? Some because they have alternatives. Okay, let's just use this example. You stay in a particular place and post a letter. You know, in letters when you are posting, you put your return address, your address, the, the person is sending the sender and the receiver. So in case the letter gets to the sender, receiver, and the receiver is not found, they will return that letter to the address where that letter was sent from. But now, if that person that received the letter was to respond to that letter, and the person that sent the letter did not put the address, or eventually put the address, but now packed out of where the address was, what do you think happens to the correspondent response? When a, a, the, the response or the, of course, a feedback comes return, that person will not receive it because that person has changed the address. So you cannot be praying to God, then at night you go and go to and ask Babalawo for help. You are changing address. It could be that night that you go to Babalawo was that night that God was to answer your prayers. So when you start changing addresses, of course, you are becoming your problem, not God's problem. Remember the story of Daniel. The angel told that he said that same day that you prayed, your answers had already been released. But the prince of Persia, many of us are just going through times like that. But you know what happened? There's always a beautiful story to it. Daniel's prayer finally was answered because the Bible said he kept praying. He didn't change address. He was still in that location. He's still in that place. So please stay in one place. Stop going to one baba. Stop going to one mama. Stop going to running here and there. Trust God. Believe him. Hello, welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. We move to our second lesson outline. He is your very present help. He sustains us. He is our very, very present help. So in Psalm 46 verse 1, it tells us that God is our present help in trouble. So this means that he is with us at all times in true challenges. You know, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them in all. You know, some people believe that for you to be a Christian or to be a child of God or to be born again, you should be free from problems. No. How then is your faith going to be tested? How then is your faith going to be tried if you don't face challenges in life? He said we are because we are more than conqueror. Then how are we going to enjoy it? So if there's no sickness, how, is we, how are we going to know that there's a cure, there's a drugs? So if you are not going through those challenges, how are we going to know that God is able to do abundantly more than we can think or ask or imagine? So God reigns supreme over all situations. You look at Psalm 99 verse 1. The Lord reigns, let the intentions tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim and let the earth shake. So the Lord rents. If you look at Psalm 40, uh, 24, rather, verse 1 and 2, the earth is the Lord and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. He did everything. He established them. He built them. So if you could build the earth, is it you? Imagine mountains. Maybe Mount Everest, uh, so many. You may measure yourself with those things he has created. Are you bigger than them? He created even an earth. Just seek this. How about your situation? Imagine how many billions of people are on earth. So your own situation will be what you have to be troubling yourself. Some of the things you call trouble are things to make you. Rather, they are not to destroy you. They are things to make you. Because at the end, testimony you share, you use it to encourage others. It is you then you believe God in more. So God cares for us. He will never abandon us. He cares for us. He will never abandon us. You know, if you look at uh, First Peter 5, 6, and 7, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up 
in due time, due time, that is emphasis. Cast your all your anxiety on him because he cares. There's a time, there's a thing called due time for us as children of God. So another point, God hears all. He hears all. He hears our cries. You know, you look at Psalm 22, verse 24. For he has for he has not despised nor scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but he has listened to his cry for help. Even the cry of the poor. If you look at Psalm 34, verse 6. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and he served him out of his troubles. God is always present, of course, in times of need. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 46, verse 1. He's a present helper in times of need. God has helped us before and can do it again. You know, you look at Hebrews 13, verse 8. The God of yesterday, today, and forever. So he remains the same. If he did it yesterday, which means he can do today, he can do even more abundantly. God knows who to, to he knows who to use to restore and meet all expectations. Look at that um, First Kings 17 that we read, the Elijah and widow of Seraphat. God directed him, he sent him, only him to the widow of Seraphat. There were other widows in Seraphat, but God sent Elijah to that particular widow. So there are destiny helpers, only if you wait for your time, only if you wait on him. So in times of trouble, tribulation, which will surely come, we should not lose hope. Neither will lose hope on God. God nor his word can never fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, according to Hebrews 13, verse 8. So God is the present help, and he showed up for Daniel. He showed up for the widow of Seraphim. He showed up for Hagar. He showed up for Ishmael. Of course, he will definitely show up for you and me. So it is safe for us to conclude that when we are facing trials and tribulation, let us com be comforted that we are not alone. God is with us. God is with us. According to Psalm 46 verse 1, God is with us. So he's able to deliver us out of difficulties. What we need to do is to hold on to him. He will make us a triumphant in the name of Jesus. Please, this topic to me, I'm just trying to rush through it so that we can limit time. But if it's to be something, I want you to take your time prayerfully. Allow the Spirit of God to open you up. Because this thing is, this topic is very, very key to Christians. Some people come Christians because they want blessings. They want prosperity. But you don't know. There are so many ways that prosperity comes. You may live for years without not going to hospital. That is prosperity. For your flesh. There are some people who even have, are living in sickness. Are been living in riches rather. But every day they are taking insulin to actually term the quantity of sugar in their blood. You know insulin these days, how much they are taking in shots. But you, living and enjoying your life, you are not taking insulin. There are some people that are living in fear, but you are living, you are going everywhere. You are not. So there are so many prosperities that we enjoy as children of God. Not until you, you become rich as Dangote or rich as any other richest man, rich man in the world. No. There are so many riches. God has been there for us. So please, I will encourage us. Put your trust in God. Please take your time. Do it prayerfully. Study this. And I know God will sustain you and your family even in times of trouble in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for always coming around to study with us. It is exciting to always see you come around. God bless you. Please do share this with others. You know this topic is loaded. Please share to encourage another person to believe and trust in God because he sustains us. See you in the next episode. You're the God who opens doors, no man can shut.